NASA displays Apollo 1 capsule hatch 50 years after fatal fire that killed Gus Grissom, Ed White and Roger Chaffee as Buzz Aldrin leads tributes with emotional tweet about my best friend. NASA Today opened an exhibit honoring the astronauts in the Apollo 1 fire, 50 years to the day they died. The hatch from the burning spacecraft is the main draw, and had been concealed, along with the capsule, for a half century. It comes as Buzz Aldrin led tributes to Gus Grissom, Ed White and Roger Chaffee with an emotional tweet describing White as my best friend. Today is the 50th anniversary of the hash Apollo 1 fire, he tweeted. We didn't only lose fellow astronauts. We lost friends. Hash Ed White was my best friend. Moonwalkers and dozens of others who took part in NASA's storied Apollo program paid tribute Thursday to the three astronauts killed in a fire 50 years ago. On the eve of the Apollo 1 anniversary, hundreds gathered at Kennedy Space Center to honor Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger Chaffee. They died during a countdown rehearsal at the launch pad, inside their burning spacecraft, on January 27, 1967. On Friday's anniversary, the hatch that trapped Gus Grissom, Ed White and Roger Chaffee inside their capsule at the launch pad finally went on display. The public exhibit at Florida's Kennedy Space Center also includes the redesigned hatch on the spacecraft that sent men to the moon. Called Ad Astra Per Aspera, a rough road leads to the stars, the tribute exhibit carries the blessings of the families of astronauts Gus Grissom, Ed White II and Roger Chaffee. It showcases clothing tools and models that defined the men as their parents, wives and children saw them as much as how the nation viewed them. The tribute was dedicated during a ceremony at the Apollo, Saturn V Center at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida on Friday, January 27, on the 50th anniversary of the fatal fire. It stands only a few miles from the long-abandoned Launch Complex 34, the launch pad where the fire took place. The pad was dismantled in 1968 after the launch of Apollo 7. The new tribute features displays that tell the full story of the lives of the astronauts, the fire and the painstaking work the NASA team put in to rebound from the devastating loss. Ultimately, this is a story of hope, because these astronauts were dreaming of the future that is unfolding today, said former astronaut Bob Cabana, center director at Kennedy. Generations of people around the world will learn who these brave astronauts were and how their legacies live on through the Apollo successes and beyond. This lets you now meet Gus Grissom, Ed White and Roger Chaffee as members of special families and also as members of our own family, said NASA's Luis Barrios, who co-led the tribute design that would eventually involve more than 100 designers, planners and builders to realize. You get to know some of the things that they liked to do and were inspired by. You look at the things they did and if anyone does just one of those things, it's a lifetime accomplishment and they did all of it and more. After seeing the hatches, visitors will walk through a gateway and down the same metal walkway astronauts used later to get to the Apollo spacecraft as it stood on a Saturn V rocket poised for the moon. Grissom, White, Chaffee, President Kennedy I think these names are appropriately mentioned together, said Michael Collins, the command module pilot for Apollo 11. What KSC visitors will see? Called Ad Astra Per Aspera, a rough road leads to the stars, the tribute exhibit carries the blessings of the families of astronauts Gus Grissom, Ed White II and Roger Chaffee. It showcases clothing, tools and models that define the men as their parents. Wives and children saw them as much as how the nation viewed them. For Grissom, one of NASA's original seven astronauts who flew the second Mercury mission, a hunting jacket and a pair of ski boots are on display, along with a small model of the Mercury spacecraft and a model of an F-86 Sabre jet like the one he flew in the Korean War. A slight rule and engineering drafts typify his dedication to detail. The small handheld maneuvering thruster that Ed White too used to steer himself outside his Gemini capsule during the first American spacewalk features prominently in the display case for the West Point graduate whose athletic prowess nearly equaled his flying acumen. An electric drill stands alongside the zip gun, as he called the thruster. Roger Chaffee, for whom Apollo 1 would have been his first mission into space, 
was an esteemed naval aviator who became a test pilot in his drive to qualify as an astronaut later. Displayed our board games he played with his wife and kids on rare evenings free of training. With the family's blessing, NAS last year pulled the hatch from storage at Langley Research Center in Virginia. All three layers of the hatch underwent preservation, but were not altered in any way. The white outer hatch is still discolored and pitted, with what looks to be charring in an upper corner. The middle hatch appears darkened. The orange inner hatch is scuffed. The three sections stand side by side. In the very next display case is the redesigned hatch. It was just one of numerous changes made to the spacecraft, as well as to procedures. No more pure oxygen, high pressure cabin atmosphere on the ground, for example, and everything fireproofed inside. The exhibit is in the same building that holds one of three remaining Saturn V rockets built for moonshots. Apollo 1 tragically cost three lives, but I think it saved more than three lives later. Without it, very likely we would have not landed on the moon by the end of the decade. A flash fire erupted inside the capsule during a countdown rehearsal, with the astronauts atop the rocket at Cape Canaveral's Launch Complex 34. A cry came from inside, got a fire in the cockpit. White struggled to open the hatch before quickly being overcome by smoke and fumes, along with his two crewmates. It was over for them in seconds. Investigators determined the most likely cause to be electrical arcing from defective wiring. With its moon program in jeopardy, NASA completely overhauled the Apollo spacecraft. The redesigned capsule, with a quick-release hatch, carried 24 men to the moon, 12 of them landed and walked on its surface. For the astronauts' families, Apollo 1 is finally getting its due. The tragedy has long been overshadowed by the 1986 Challenger and 2003 Columbia accidents. Remnants of the lost shuttles have been on display at the visitor complex for one and a half years. I'm just so pleased that they finally decided to do something, visibly, to honor the three guys, said Chaffee's widow, Martha. It's time that they show the three who died in the fire appreciation for the work that they did. On Friday, the 50th anniversary, the crew's families will help dedicate the new exhibit. For most of them. A private tour Wednesday marks the first time they've seen any of the capsule. This is way, way, way long overdue. But we're excited about it, said Scott Grissom, Gus Alderson. NASA was embarrassed about the fire and that's why they pretty much kept it in the closet as long as they have. Like the rest of America, NASA was in shock and simply did not want to talk about it, said Martha Chaffee. Exhibits at Kennedy and elsewhere would mention the fire but not highlight it. Timeline of a tragic day A flash fire erupted inside the capsule during a countdown rehearsal, with the astronauts atop the rocket at Cape Canaveral's Launch Complex 34. A cry came from inside, got a fire in the cockpit. White struggled to open the hatch before quickly being overcome by smoke and fumes, along with his two crewmates. It was over for them in seconds. Investigators determined the most likely cause to be electrical arcing from defective wiring. With its moon program in jeopardy, NASA completely overhauled the Apollo spacecraft. The redesigned capsule, with a quick-release hatch, carried 24 men to the moon, 12 of them landed and walked on its surface. As the years and decades rolled by, Apollo 1 became a mere footnote in space history. Chaffee's daughter, Cheryl, who retired last month after working at Kennedy for 33 years, recalls having to buy a memorial wreath herself to display at the Space Center on the 20th anniversary. The Astronauts Memorial Foundation took over the annual observance that honors all astronauts killed in the line of duty, this year's ceremony is Thursday. But it wasn't until NASA unveiled its tribute to the 14 Challenger and Columbia astronauts in June 2015 that the agency wondered why it hadn't done anything similar for Apollo 1. This wasn't our generation, it wasn't on our radar like the shuttle accidents were, explained Kelvin Manning, associate director of Kennedy Space Center. Determined to make things right, he and others at Kennedy began work on a display. NASA consulted the two surviving widows and six children, 
explaining it wanted to honor the three men in their sacrifice, and show how Apollo 1 ultimately paved the way to the moon. Grissom, an original Mercury astronaut, was the second American to fly in space. White was the nation's first spacewalker. Chaffee was the rookie for the flight, a demo in low Earth orbit. Bonnie Bear, White's daughter, is grateful the entire capsule is not on display, as so many other family members have been urging for decades. I want them to be remembered for the other things and not necessarily for the accident, she said. As the 30th anniversary of the fire approached, Betty Grissom, Gus Widow, had pushed to have the capsule put on public display. The request was denied. There's a long list of places where really bad things happened to our country, but we display those respectfully and appropriately, Scott Grissom said, citing the Alamo, Gettysburg and the Arizona Memorial at Pearl Harbor. The retired FedEx pilot said displaying the hatch is a start. This is a long overdue step at doing right.